Today, we'll take a look at replacing computer or phone screens in your video. We'll take a look at a few different examples, including static shots, moving shots, and even replacing screens with movement in front of them. Hey guys, what's up? This is Serge and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, if you enjoy these tutorial videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. New videos upload a weekly. First up, we'll take a look at a simple screen replacement with no movement. The camera is on a tripod and there's no movement in front of the screen, so this will be nice and simple. Also in my demo clip, we're using a green screen, but for this method, it's not necessary. Select your screen replacement clip in the media browser and connect it above your timeline. Next, from the Viewer drop-down menu, select the Distort tool. Click and drag the four corners to line up this clip to your screen. Zoom in on your viewer for more precision and make your top clip slightly bigger than the actual screen. Next, from the Effects browser, select the Masks category and add a Shape Mask to your top clip. In the inspector, set the feather amount to zero. Hold down the option key to adjust control points individually and click and drag each control point until the red line lines up with your screen edges. Next, adjust the curvature to match your screen and set the feather amount to about 10 to blend your two clips together. A quick and easy screen replacement. Our next demo clip is similar to the first one, except this time the camera isn't on a tripod, so there's a bit of motion in this clip. Once again, place your replacement clip above your timeline, move your playhead to the start of the clip, and use a distort tool to line it up with your bottom clip. Make sure your playhead is at the start of the clip, and add a keyframe to your distort parameters. Go through your clip, one frame at a time, and adjust your Distort tool to follow your screen. Take your time here, and do this as accurately as possible for the most realistic look. Next, add a Shape Mask to your top clip, adjust the size and curvature, and set the feather amount to around 10. Your mask will move with the top clip, so there's no need to keyframe it. Your finished results should look like this. Looks good, but as you can see, it can be very time consuming. For our next clip, we'll take a look at how to do this much faster using a tracking plugin. The one I use is Carmelt's Track X, and I'll leave a link for it in the video description below. Track X isn't free, but if you need to track anything in your video, it can be well worth its price. Now, where in the previous clips, it didn't really matter what was on screen, this method requires a little bit of forethought when filming. To get a good tracking result, you need to have something on your screen with consistent detail that can be tracked, not just plain color or large moving reflections. I find a solid background with tracking markers works best for me. A quick Google search for tracking markers will give you lots of options for this. So, with TrackX installed, open your generator's browser, Select the C2 Track X category, add the track layer above your clip, and ripple trim it to desired length. Place your playhead at the start of your clip, choose the polygonal shape tool, and draw a shape around your tracking markers. It doesn't have to be exact, as long as the selected area has detail that can be tracked. Click the first control point to close your shape. Next, click the Track Forward button, and let Track X analyze and track your clip. Once the tracking is done, move to step 2, Surface. Click on the Surface Source Clip box in the inspector, choose the clip you want to place inside your tracked area, and click Apply Clip. Next, set the mask blur to about 1, zoom in on your viewer, and click and drag the corner control points to resize your clip to fit your screen. This achieves the same thing we did in our last clip, except this time, much quicker and easier. 
Next, let's take a look at screen replacement with movement in front of the screen. There's two ways of doing this. One way is adding a keyframe and draw mask, or an easier way is to use a green screen like in my demo clip. Select your clip, hold down the Option key, and drag up to make a copy of it. Press V to disable it for now. Next, select your replacement clip, connect it above your timeline, and use the Distort tool to resize it over your screen. Press V to re-enable your copy clip and drag it up to the top layer. From the Effects Browser, select the Key in Category and apply the Key or Effect to your top clip. Let your clip render out and you're left with this effect. And I do apologize if anyone finds the timing of my demo clips a little bit offensive. So that's a couple different ways to replace screens in your videos. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out the rest of my channel for more Final Cut Pro tutorials. New videos upload weekly, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.